Thanks, Emily. So, uh, you know, I'm, as I said earlier, very excited about this meeting, kind of the out of our heads into our bodies. There's so much being poured into our heads right now. And the, you know, and it does take us out of our bodies, which is really where we feel from, where our capacity to feel and know where to respond is. So I'm excited, um, Emily, for you to help take us there. So I'm Jody Evans. I'm one of the co-founders of Code Pink and the um, the, the nursemaid of the local peace economy. And I'm Emily Franco. I'm the local peace economy coordinator at Code Pink. And welcome everyone. If you haven't already, please feel free to introduce yourself with your name, um, your pronouns, um, where you're logging in from in the chat. Um, and I'm gonna start with just a few announcements before I really drop in, um, just so we can fully drop into our bodies. Um, and I'll put them in the chat and then I'll go through them. All right, so they're in the chat. The first one is to register for our next call, which is the 28th. I know we had a modified summer schedule, um, but we're going back to the bi-weekly. Um, so we'll be back in two weeks on the 28th of August. Um, the next is to add yourself to the local peace economy Padlet. I'll share my screen to, very quickly so you can see what that is. So this is the Padlet. This is a way for um, us to kind of see where all of us are and where um, people joining local peace economy meetings are located and maybe as a way to connect with people near you. So um, I'll scroll it. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the US, which is where most of the folks are who've added themselves. But if you want to add yourself, and we hope that you do, how you do that is this little um, pink button down here that is a plus button. You can click that and then you can search a place by name. I'm in Denver. Um, so then I would select Denver. And then I'd put my name or else we won't know who you are. I'll say Emily, local peace economy coordinator at Code Pink. Um, and maybe if there's any other information about what you're doing in your community that you wanted to share, you can um, type that in there um, and then hit publish and it'll add itself to the map. Um, so it's a great way to just kind of see who's who's around and where all of us are um, spread out across the country and the world. Um, next is, let me go back to my announcements here. Um, if you want to set up a time to talk to Jody and me if, about any local peace economy ideas that you have that you need support with, please email me. Um, my email's there to set up a time as well. Um, please, if you haven't already and um, you'd like to stay connected between calls, you can join the local peace economy listserv. It's a great way for people to share what's coming up for them, what they're learning between calls, photos, stories, things like that. And lastly, one of our recent Grow Pink Radio episodes was all about the local peace economy. It's called What is the Root of Peace? Super great episode. Jody interviewed two people um, that are well worth listening to. Um, so those are the announcements. Um, I, I see your question there, Greg. I would, I believe so, but I'm not positive about that. But I think you can, um, I think you can edit your posts in, in Padlet. Okay, so as Jody said, tonight we're talking about getting into our bodies, embodiment. And this topic was in part inspired by Tim, who's a regular on these calls. I'm trying to see, yep, Tim's here, hi Tim. Um, Tim came to me and said, people are feeling depressed and demoralized and I think we need to dance, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but in general, this was just a reminder about the need to get into our bodies when we talk about it on these calls, but Today we're actually going to do it together and not let the Zoom sphere get in our way and not just be disembodied heads in boxes on the screen with each other. Um, so rather than grounding in a piece of culture tonight, um, as we typically do, we're going to get into our bodies a little bit more and ground in our bodies and see what wisdom it has to share with us. So I encourage you to have fun with this, to let go a little bit. This is all in the spirit of play. And that said, being in our bodies might not feel safe for everyone, and it can be different every day, even moment to moment for each of us. So before we begin, um, take a moment to really check in with yourself and listen for if being in your body right now is a yes, a no, or maybe a we'll see. 
and listen in and honor what you're hearing. And that yes, no, or maybe might change at any time during the activity that we're about to do. And we can follow that and we can allow that. This is all an invitation. The war economy tries to take away our sovereignty and our choice. And so our actions to, to move out of it must be rooted in sovereignty and choice. So if you did receive a yes for being in your body and participating, we'll begin. Um, it'd be great if folks could leave their cameras on for this or turn it on if it's off. It makes it more fun for everyone. And also I know that being in our bodies is vulnerable. So if you're able to access this activity with your camera off, um, you're welcome to do that too. But if you can come off camera, I encourage you to. And of course, please attend to any other access needs that you have. You can stay seated, you can stand up, you can do this laying on the ground, whatever your body needs right now. So we're going to touch into the wisdom of our bodies together by taking some different shapes in our bodies. I'll invite you to take the shape of a certain energy or emotion, and we'll see what our bodies have to say about it. The invitation is to let your body take the shape however it's showing up in this moment, not necessarily how you want it to show up. We're not doing this to judge ourselves or improve ourselves or perfect ourselves in some way. We're doing this to learn what's here in our bodies because what's here is going to inform how we're showing up out there. So before we start, let's give our bodies whatever they need. I'm going to stand up for this activity. Again, you're welcome to stand. You're welcome to stay seated. Let me adjust my camera so you can see me a little bit better. Um, maybe take a few breaths. Maybe move around. Um, stretch. You might need to take off your screen. Um, your you put it on black. Uh, so you don't disappear into the image. Oh yeah. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So yeah, maybe stretch a little bit. I know I've been sitting for the last hour on our last webinar, so I'm gonna stretch. You can shake a little bit. I've been shaking a lot recently. Whatever you need to kind of drop in and get in your body. And can you all hear me okay? Just give me a thumbs up just because I'm a little further away from my microphone. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna give a prompt. Um, that asks, what shape does... Hey, Greg, how are you doing that? Did you see Greg's just sparkled? I've never done that before. <laughs> just imagine what happened? Your body. <laughs> wow. That um, was really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to give a prompt. Of, um, I'll say it a few different ways. You can kind of choose the language that resonates with you, and I'll kind of weave in and out of these prompts, but... What shape does, and then I'll give an energy or an emotion, take in your body today? So we'll do the first one we can do as an example. What shape does urgency take in your body today? Or another way to think about this is what shape does urgency want to make today? Or how does urgency want to express itself today in your body? So when you're feeling urgency in your body, what does that look like? And then we're going to take that shape with our body. As Jody's demonstrating, it can doesn't have to be a, a static shape. It can move. So urgency for me, I'll just, I won't share my um, example every time, but it's like a, like a moving forward kind of abruptly. So it's like a, this kind of motion for me. So feel into it. What comes up when I ask, how does urgency want to express itself today in your body? And then the invitation is, as you are taking that shape, feel into it. What sensations are coming up? What emotions are coming up? Maybe thoughts or narratives or words. And then we'll just move through a few more like this. And if, if anyone doesn't feel um, like something you want to engage with, an energy or emotion you don't want to engage with in this way, feel free to, um, to skip it. So the next one is anger. What shape does anger take in your body today? Again, feeling into it, noticing what comes up.
How does pleasure want to express itself today in your body? How about the energy of exertion? What shape does exertion take in your body today? What shape does it want to make today? And if it's helpful to kind of give a shake to reset after each one, that's welcome with a breath. How about what shape does rootedness want to make today? Rootedness or groundedness? Noticing what's arising in your body, in your mind, in your heart, in your gut. What shape does surrender take in your body today? Give a little shake. How does a boundary want to express itself today in your body? Drawing a boundary. What shape does that take? And just two more. What shape does offering want to make in your body today? And our last one for now, how does belonging want to express itself today in your body? What shape does belonging take in your body? Hmm. Thank you all for participating whatever way you did in that activity. Again, invitation to kind of shake it out, take a breath. And I just want to say a word. Oh, let me adjust my camera. Thing so you're not looking at my ceiling. Um, About aftercare. Anytime we're getting into our bodies in our disembodied culture, it can bring up a lot. So please drink water, nourish your body. Maybe you want to journal later, give yourself the space that you need. These simple, simple, simple movements can bring up a lot. Um, so please tend to yourself and give yourself what you need. And I'd love to invite um, you to put in the chat one word that's present for you right now after that activity. Maybe it's something that, a word that came to you during the activity. Maybe it's how you're feeling, feeling right now. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, positive. I think sometimes when we're talking about embodiment, it can be perceived as, oh, it's like this great, it's going to feel good. And, um, and sometimes it will feel good. And sometimes it will feel really bad, maybe, or like, because we're confronting the, the pain um, that's, that's in our body and the grief that we talk about. Um, so it's not about necessarily feeling good, as they say in the lineage of, I believe, generative somatics, it's about feeling more. Um, so with that, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to your words in the chat. I see truth. For me, I'm feeling buzzy. I'm feeling the energy moving through my body a bit more. So if anyone else wants to share in the chat, calmness, emotional advocacy, mm, insecure, relaxed. Yes, it's all welcome. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jody. Wellness, do you, do you want to say a few words? Thank you. So um, thank you, Emily. I feel emotional and I feel more. I, I also feel more. Um, so thank you for that experience of feeling more and taking us out of our minds and into our bodies. 
So I just wanted to check in with everyone about how you are doing. I mean, this is really, you know, Tim, thank you for asking the question. It, you know, I find it to be a really hard time that so hard to navigate, you know, the last two days, seeing those two newborns and their mom and their grandmother and the poor dad, just like uncontrollable. I, I find myself just, you know, <laughs> Out, out of my body because it's just like, it's too much. And, um, you know, it, and also I think the roller coaster of emotions that we, we are experiencing. I have to say, I, every day I'm with another group of amazing, thank you, Tim, for putting me on a book tour. It's been, uh, it's been a lot, but also nourishing. Um, and, you know, I, I wonder, how everyone is finding the way to navigate so much. You know, I made everybody stop and feel the victory of getting Biden out of the race because everybody moved forward and into like getting rid of, the, you know, like being angry at Kamala. So it's like also the time of, you know, do we take time to stop and go, wow, the pro-Palestinian movement of love just moved a president a president out of his capacity to run again. That's huge. I mean, really, that hasn't happened in, you know, since 1968. Um, and just want to remind everybody that in 1965, the anti-war movement was successful at moving the populace of the country against the war, 1965. That war ended in 1975. And I know for myself, every day I want everything I do to stop it tomorrow. Like, that's how I feel. And sometimes I have to remember how slow change is and also witness how violent this structure is that we live inside of. It's what we work with every day. It's what this work is. So it's being able to be with all of that, you know, the hell, the psych the psychopathy, the victories, the impatience, you know, that every day, like way more than what we just moved for through physically is present. And, you know, I love Emily taking us through because it's like reminding me when these, when I feel stuck in these emotions to live them in my body so that they can move because they do get stuck there and it's not comfortable and it's not useful. And when we're here, you know, as a local peace economy in service to our community, the service starts first with the care here. Um, because in that care, we know how to care for each other. So I'm just wondering if y'all could share, what do you do? You know, what are you doing in this time? Um, Tim reached out to, to Emily and said, you know, I think we need this. Um, what do you want to reach out and say, I think we need something? I mean, I know what we need is uh, a different power structure in the empire of the United States of America. Like I'll just name that one, but a reminder in the local peace economy work, that's one we don't have the lever on. So like how to pull it back to what do we need that we actually have a lever on that Tim did so well, which is like, here's where we can actually affect. So any hands want to be raised? Anybody feeling anything? Yes, thank you, Tim. Uh, yes, you know, it's it's hard every day to live with all the bad news. It overwhelms you too much. And for me, nature is always great. But the other thing is with this community here, just sharing our agony and and our hope for a better future working with everybody. So that part is good for me. But like I say, nature is like a release. You just walk outside and it just seems to flow out and you let all that positive come in. So so keep up the good work, Jody. Hope to see you soon. 
<laughs> I would just use Tune to Tim. I'm sorry you missed you on uh the I ran out of gas yesterday or Sunday. Oh, I'm not so not in the car, but sorry. physically. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm glad you took care of yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you took care of yourself. And you should know that everyone was deeply grateful for your idea because it was nourishing beyond anyone's comprehension. Yeah, I look forward to it. I do. Yeah. It uh, well, I'm excited when when I'll come to you. So nature. Um uh, you know, we look at um, one of the pivots, which is that scarcity to abundance pivot. And I think nature is one of the great teachers there that, you know, in the way that it is always there for us to nourish. So that's also a good thing when you're pivoting from that sense of scarcity, <laughs> a scarcity of sanity in the world, that the abundance of nature is a good healer. Chuck. Okay. Yeah, I, ag I agree that one too um i what i find is you know we're in this paradigm or whatever it, you know like we have to either be with commit we're either with camp camilla or we're with trump you know even in the progressive community i know i belong to several groups and uh i get a, a daily dose of that you know and yes a couple days ago i just finally I said, no offense. I sent out an email to a bunch of people I know. And I said, you know, this is how I see it. You know, and I say, I say, you know, and I, I quoted Kennedy as saying, you know, some people see things as they are and say, why I see things as they are, you know, as what they can be and say, why not? And I reminded them of that. And that's, I said that that's what carries me through the day right now. And I said, you know, I cannot support these people for the following reasons but i said they're my reasons but you know i thought you know just getting that out there and just letting them know where i'm coming from no disrespect from you but i'm not on the camilla harris and and oh, oh tim wald's bandwagon i just can't be for what's going on in gaza uh and many other things too and uh, for me that was a you know, kind of a freeing experience for myself, you know, to just finally get it out there in a non-judgmental way. And uh, that helps because, you know, you know, we're always inundated with, you know, and, and that's what started it. Somebody told me we only have two choices. I said, no, we don't have two choices. <laughs> you know, we can get, we can go see our congressmen and stay there at their offices till till they change their minds, or we can try to get the Democratic Party to work with the Greens or or, or Cornell West. Uh, you know, we can we can. Um, oh, what else did I say? I said we can choose the Rodney King option. Can't we all just get along instead of having the two state solution, which Israel <laughs> doesn't want? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, there there are many options, and uh, we just, you know, so many people in this movement, not not in, any of you here in the group, but some of the movements I belong to, the groups, they just see the two options, and that's that's it. And I just, ah, no. So, so anyway, Chuck, that's my two I mean, cents. so there you are. You're modeling the peace economy for other communities. And I think that's what our task is. We're to be these healthy peace economy little, you know, amoebas that are infecting the war economy disease. And that's what you did beautifully. I mean, first of all, it's like to use your voice, but in a disarming, uh, nourishing way that lands your truth present against a truth at something that someone feels is the truth, but you've expanded. You know, remember the war economy makes us in this little narrow, well, you know, either or instead of, you know, us and. Um, so you modeled so many pieces of the local peace economy in, you modeled humor, you modeled, you know, like the breaking open of the structure that everyone's stuck inside of and just owning it for yourself. Um, mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That is beautiful peace economy modeling. And, you know, I just think the first thing is that when people are stuck in the either or, that is war economy thinking. That is like, mm -hmm. we are smarter than that, you know? And um, when we were disrupting the Kamala fundraiser um, at the Fairmont on Sunday, 
like we were there when everyone was coming out oh, and yeah. they, uh don't you like oh you know are you for trump and like you can think better than that do i look like i'm for trump you know like it was just like who's making <laughs> you think this way like what what you know and then explain and i was able to move a lot of people by explaining that like once you're in the polls and you vote your vote is over between now and the and when you do that is when your vote matters and that vote is your voice calling for what you want because once they've got your vote man they could care less and they're owned by the deep state and whatever whatever you want to project on Kamala I don't really care um because it's a mystery but you know you could look oh. at the past to inform oh, no. and it doesn't you know it doesn't look so good but um you know no judgments it's just like but let's be more creative, you know, let's be out here in the, um, I believe in my vote and I'm going to have it matter from now until November 3rd. Every day I'm gonna be using my voice and disrupting the status quo because guess what, it worked. We got Biden out of the race, it worked, you know why? Because people couldn't vote for him anymore. It was affecting down ballot races and people were freaking out. And when, you know, unfortunately, they only freaked out and put another mask on the deep state. Um, but, you know, so we're just going to keep making them uncomfortable until they have to do something else. Um, which continues to reveal to a bigger audience what a lie the whole thing is. I mean, it's, you know enough people young you know the fact that young people are getting it matters the fact it's it's we're educating activating and inspiring you know so that's what's happening and you did a beautiful job thank you so much and that you have the courage to share your voice in other communities that are being silly and you can do it in a beautiful way and just own it is is being a peacemaker you know it's what we do a code pink all day, every day. So thank you for that. Um, and it also, I must say, doesn't it help move the energy of frustration? Yes. <laughs> Anybody, <Absolutely>. else? Yes. <laughs> Anybody else have a way they unplug or embody or disconnect from what can feel frustrating and overwhelming and you know devouring and its stupidity? Any other, anybody else want to share? Hi, this is uh, Wilson, Will on the chat. So, hi. hi. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's very difficult right now just uh, watching what's happening and experiencing, you know, just, you know, people dying. And, you know, so I try to still do the things that I enjoy, like jogging and, you know, watching a movie here and there or maybe going out and trying a new restaurant and, even when I do that, you know, it's it's difficult because I'm thinking, okay, while I'm enjoying life and things, people are dying or suffering, but um, I feel like I have to check out at times and kind of just put it aside because if I don't, then it could just, you know, damage um, just my mental health. So that's what I've been doing. And I think I've been able to manage it. I think at the beginning it was very difficult because just uh, – I'm, I'm plugging from it was difficult, just paying attention uh, to it constantly. But now I take little breaks. I take little breaks from it. I, I do things I enjoy and then I come back to it. And then, you know, and then some days it might be like maybe a day or two where I don't, you know, I tend to write to my Congress representative and I tend to write to the White House and I tend to post uh, or not post, but, but write on the comments and, you know, talk to other people and, there's days, maybe a day or two that go by that I, I don't do it because I get busy and I'm, you know, doing something. And then, so I feel guilty, but at the same time, I feel like, you know what, maybe that was needed. And then I just need to go back to it and 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 continue talking to people and, and spreading the message of that this is not okay. So, so yeah, I guess it's a balancing act for me, just um, continuing to stay active and, and paying attention and continuing to, to, speak out about it but at the same time doing things that i enjoy yeah so will where do you live uh riverside california Riverside. okay um yeah. and so uh does community nourish you 
Um, I have friends who I talk to about it. Um, it's a mix. Some of them completely understand what's going on. Some of them understand, but they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to get into it. They rather not, or they might say, yeah, I don't know all the details of what's happening. So I think it's a mix. So I do have a couple of people who know what's happening and, and pay attention and really are, you know, very, you know, concerned about it. And, but most uh, other people I know kind of want to kind of stay away from it, I would say. All right. Yeah. Well, what I, I would also encourage is community is a really good way of healing. Um, there is a really cool peace and justice community in Riverside and it might take a little like Googling or Facebooking to find it. Um, and I think you're probably too far from the Coachella, Coachella Valley one. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I do spend a lot of time in, in LA in Los Angeles because my family's there, friends are there. So I do come, you know, I do spend a lot of time in LA. So I think uh, a Riverside or LA groups are, you know, good for me. Yeah. So you should look and check into the LA, um, the LA groups and, you know, just sign in and be in the chat, see what's going on. See if when you're coming to town, there's something. Um, we have a lot of local peace economy projects that happen out of our LA activist groups um, mm -hmm. where we take care of each other, where we do art builds. Um, so there's a lot of um, coming together, both in, in, in activism, but also in care. Uh, once a month, we have a gathering where we get together and nourish each other's bellies with some good food. So, um, you know, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure yeah. out um, maybe I'm going to put in here, um, Ryan, um, I could pink. You can reach out and say you want to join the um, signal groups for L.A. Um, and that way, because uh, I find that community is such a heart nourisher. Um, and, uh, there's, there's a lot, there's, I think five LA groups. So one might be where your family is. Where's your family when you come? Uh, LA area, kind of like downtown LA area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that sounds great. Yeah. Because, you know, I've seen protests that happen sometimes and, and I don't know that they're going to happen. So I see them after the fact and I'm like, okay, well, I wish I had, you know, I had to find out about them so I could be there. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I saw in the chat that someone placed the, yeah, um, I put Ryan yeah. in there. You can just write to Ryan and say, I come to LA. How can I hook into the listservs or the signal okay. groups? Um, and, you know, I have to say, I'm in the signal groups for many cities, and I just get nourished by the conversation that goes on, the sharing of um, inspiring <laughs> things, educational things, or just how people are doing um, and yeah. um, what they're doing. It's very inspiring. So it's it's also even just being in the chat, I think, is inspiring um, and nourishing. Um, yeah, it is. So, so sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, I'll definitely connect with Ryan. Is there anybody else that wants to share how they find their way? Oh, Joe, thank you. Uh, I have a regular practice, a meditation practice, which is based on... on uh, the one that I learned years ago from Thich Nhat Hanh, but it's changed a lot since then. In fact, it changes all the time. Um, but I, I really, that nourishes all the other avenues of engagement that I've got, like my art, my writing, the, <coughs> excuse me, the people that I'm, I'm forming relationships with, new relationships now, because I've found that my way of thinking has changed. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether other people in this group have had this kind of experience, but I'm having the most profound dreams that, you know, they're, they're, they're hard to deal with because damn it, they just, the, the details don't stay. But what does stay is the spirit of the dream. And so I've stopped fighting for the you know to try to write everything down and capture it that way and more and more as you were as people have been saying you Jody and, and Ellie of course to embody the, what the dream is delivering in my body and in my relationships so I hope that's helpful thanks oh 
Oh, that's so great. Um, so I just want to say I was just three days in a dreamscape with Bio and Orlin that come from Africa, and they were bringing in the wisdom of these African traditions, and dream is very core to them. But one yeah. of the things that, that, you know, trying to describe a dream is colonizing the dream. So um, we've been taught in the, in the empire to colonize the dream instead of let the just let the dream be speaking to us and not having to colonize it with meaning. That's right. So, oh, that's you're... beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. um, they were just like the green, the dream, like trust that the dream is speaking to you and that you know how to be in relationship with the dream that isn't through your head. So bravo. <laughs> and also to breath, um, you know, to following our breaths, our breath is life. And, you know, in the, you know, in the way that Chuck is modeling, you know, how do you be responding to a moment instead of reacting to a moment, mm -hmm. being in our breath and, and centered in our breath and in our bodies helps us be in that place of sharing instead of needing to be right or needing to just to being in the room and sharing what I call that tuning fork of what we are. Um, yes. And that doesn't happen enough. Um, and when you really realize how much the war economy is like toxifying all of life, yes. we, we it's like our offering of life is just that little shake of like, it will resonate for someone even when they're asleep, it will be like breaking something apart. So right. thank you for bringing us back to the breath mm -hmm. and for, you know, the meditation that continues to transform to need. It's a right. local economy, you know, meditation. It's transforming to need what is needed. So yeah. thank you for all those sharings. Now, why don't we break into our breakouts? And, you know, I think to start, we wanted to um, share how we experienced moving in our bodies and and what how that serves us, where it, it um, is it natural, you know, like, what do you want to say to each other about these embodying experiences and how you could use them or maybe ones you have to share with each other? So um, I'm going to break us into, I think, five groups. Um, I think that should work. Let's try four. Um, or should be one, two, three, four. Okay, five. So you have time to talk. Um, there we go. We'll, um, we'll see you back on the other side. What is embodying for you? How was the exercise? What do you have to share with each other? Thank you. Welcome back, those of you are coming back from breakout rooms. I hope you were able to talk about your bodies and ways in and um, learn from each other. Two more. Seconds Shelly, for remind me where you live. Me? Maine. Me. Yeah. Oh, I live in Tucson. I live in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Actually, last year I lived in Santa Monica. I saw you at the City Hall uh, rally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just lost our, our bid to Culver City, but we're going to keep pushing. Oh, okay, good, good. That was great that we won Santa Monica. Uh, that was very exciting. Yeah, that's yeah, you yeah, know it, it takes a community, and they said no, it will never happen. And we got six to one, which was like also really, you know, when people yeah. are like hear the stories and witness it, their hearts can't vote another way, which was clear. Right. right. Even that crazy mayor. I know he delayed that meeting for so long. I had to leave at like eleven o'clock, but that was terrible what they did. They delayed it for hours. I left at 2.30 in the morning when it was over. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for staying. <laughs> I'm blown away that city council members work until 2.30 in the morning. Oh, anyway. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with each other. 
Um, and now, Emily, what are what are how do we like leave embodied? Well, as Tim said, he came to me and said, "I think we need to dance. Let's dance." So we're gonna dance. Um, I'll put on a song. Uh, it looks like everyone's muted, which will just help the song come through better. Uh, but again, invitation. This is all invitation, but invitation to put your um, your camera on if you're willing. I know dancing can be really vulnerable. Um, and it doesn't have to be dancing. It could just be moving your body, whatever you need. But use it as a as a practice of coming back to yourself, coming back to your body as you leave this call, after being on the screen, after listening to others. Um, and to attending to whatever's coming up and, and maybe being in some joy around it too, if that's present. So I'm just gonna share my computer sound. Some of you may know this song, maybe not. And and I know some of us will dance our way out. So before we turn the music on, just the, you know, thank you so much for being peacemakers, for sharing with each other so generously, for how we learn together, how we feel together how we're stepping out of the war economy into a future together. Deepest, deepest gratitude. And keep an eye on uh, the Code Pink social media next week. We hope to be delighting you with all our theater as we disrupt the DNC for a week. Oh, and yes. <laughs> so uh, as we dance our way out, until two weeks from now.